Okay, he's the firstborn of all creation. Well, to be the firstborn can mean that you're the first child in the family, of course. Jesus is unique. Why? Because he has no human father. You read that in Matthew 1 and Luke 1. Extensive, detailed account of how it was that Jesus, the Son of God, came into existence. If you're not going to believe that, that's your privilege. You have a right not to believe Scripture, but I advise strongly against that. The highest of the kings of the earth, the supreme royal figure, my firstborn, that's what it means in a messianic context. So you know that many of the Psalms deal with the Messiah, who he's going to be and what he's going to do, and principally then Psalm 89 and Psalm 72 and Psalm 132, if you want for your notes, there's three Psalms, 132, Psalm 89 and Psalm 72. As it happens, they conclude the five books of Psalms. That's interesting. The five books of Psalms, rather like the five books of Moses, rather like the five divisions of the book of Matthew, as the new Torah. So those Psalms conclude with the subject that they find the most significant and most interesting of all, namely the Messianic kingdom. And there it is. The firstborn, the chief king. And there are other kings of the earth. Who are they? Princes who rule with Jesus. To be the firstborn, I think the same with Ephraim and Manasseh, isn't it? <coughs> Actually, chronologically, the firstborn doesn't make you the supreme one. Isaiah chapter 32. That hasn't happened. Do you currently see one single king ruling righteously? I don't think so. What about the princes, the royal family that rule with him? That's the theme of the Bible right there. And massively so in the book of Isaiah. That's the gospel of the kingdom. The good news is that we're not going to have to live through the tortured governments of the present age forever. When you pray, may your kingdom come, you're praying, may God establish his kingdom upon the earth using his one Messiah and the trained elect who are also firstborn of God. They're, they're also reckoned as the firstborn, because Jesus, you know in Romans 8, isn't it, is the firstborn among many brothers. You see the connection there. Jesus is the image of God, but we are also predestined to be the image of God. Otherwise, how could we be brothers alongside the one brother, Jesus? So, we're to be firstborn as he is, we're to be kings of the world, Isaiah 32 and Daniel 7, you will never go very far in any Bible study without talking of Daniel 7, which says that the saints are going to rule the world with Messiah at the second coming. And all nations, this is the end of Daniel 7, 27. Easy to remember, 3 times 3 times 3, 27. Daniel 7, 27. The climax of that chapter is that all the nations and tongues, languages and peoples of the world have to, to conform to what saints say. This is my son, listen to him, or perish. Psalm 2 then is quoted four or five times, alluded to in the book of Revelation. So don't be like Luther and say that the book of Revelation is not a Christian book. I would advise against that. He wiped out 22 chapters of scripture. <coughs> Actually, Revelation is a compilation of, of uh, quotes and allusions to the Old Testament. So if you wipe out the book of Revelation, you're wiping out the prophets of Israel. Don't go there as to dismiss scripture, and you won't do well with that. So, he's the firstborn of many brothers. He's the firstborn, as we're going to see later in this passage, from the dead. That's the first to come alive and live forever. We know that certain uh, characters in the Old Testament were raised from the dead, but they didn't live on forever. We know that in the New Testament times, people were resuscitated, brought back to life by absolute miracle. But they didn't gain immortality, nor did Enoch and Elijah, who are now dead, according to Hebrews 11. They may have lived for a while, of course, and then they were transported in extraordinary ways out of sight of the public, who went looking for them. And they actually wrote a letter back, in the case of Enoch or Elijah, but they finally died. So Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 is your go-to place for all of the prophets and Old Testament heroes who died waiting for the resurrection.